Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you because this is a holy ground, oh God, and your presence is here, oh God, to make a testimony of our lives in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our Father, our prophet, who is ready to speak to us. We pray that your anointing is increased over his life. Your grace is sufficient over his life. And my Father, even as we speak, we are receiving and drinking from him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you because we are doers of your word, oh God. And each one of us, we are testifying of your goodness. Our faith is revived tonight, oh God. We we are revived, my father, to testify in our health, in our family, our children, our businesses, oh God. Father, we thank you because we are a living episode and whatever is happening in our lives, the generation are looking and testifying that surely we serve a living God. Father, we honor your presence tonight. Even as we hear your word, we are receiving it with thanksgiving in our heart. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Prophet, I'm not sure whether amen. Sister Thando is around. Sister Thando is around. Linda Paul is around. Joanne is around. Oh, uh, Sister Thando, Sister you're welcome. Del Agara is around. Uh, Catherine, Catherine Nanga is around. So anybody you want to call, you can call. Uh, I wanted the person who can lead the praise and uh, the leaders into worship. Everybody. I don't know whether... Everybody, Linda, Linda Paul. Do, Linda oh, Linda Paul. Paul, you are here. Please welcome and lead us in a moment of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise God, everyone. Amen. Amen. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. And to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And you are mighty in this place, mighty God. You are mighty in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. Unto you our lives we raise. You are mighty in this place, mighty God. And you are Jesus in this place, mighty God. You are Jesus in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, and to you our lives we raise. You are Jesus in this place, mighty God. Oh, you are faithful in this place, mighty God. You are faithful in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, and to you our lives we raise. You are faithful in this place, mighty God. An awesome God, how great thou art. An 
and you are God, mighty are your miracles, we stand in awe of your holiness, and Lord, we bow and worship you. Awesome God, awesome God, how great Thou art, You are God, mighty are Your miracles, we stand in awe of Your holy Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, God bless all of you for tuning in after the short break. And I want you to know that tonight is going to be such an awesome night for somebody. Just so that I know that you guys are not robots, I want your hands to be busy. And then I want you to type your expectation for tonight. What do you want God to do for you tonight? as we get ready to listen to the word of God, I am fired up. And of course, if you have the address of the devil or his phone number, just send him a message, he's in trouble today. Something incredible is about to happen. God bless you. I see Flocky, Flocky, God bless you. Are you, are you back to Mombasa? Flocky, God bless you so much. And then there's a woman of God that I, I love so much. I saw her on the call, Aminata. I don't know if she's still on the call, Aminata. Aminata, I saw her on the call. Yes, God bless all of you. Sandra K, God bless you. Um, Pastor Hazel, Pastor Hazel from South Africa. I see you, God bless you so much. I hope the man of God is doing well. Awesome. My next trip, my next, my next stop will be in South Africa. You guys should pray so that you all get vaccinated as soon as possible. So that when I come, I can just lay hands and lay legs and all that. <laughs> okay. Stella Agara says, I am seeking direction and revelation. Tell me what you also, what your expectation is for tonight, Margaret Mutheo says acceleration and speed. Let me also know what you're expecting God to move or to do in your life tonight. Monica says grace for speed, grace for speed, grace for speed. 
Awesome. Grace for speed. Father, anybody that would type an expectation, I declare, let them have one in Jesus' name. Amen. David Mwaniki says, my expectation is that God may establish my relationship with him. So shall it be. Julia says, I just need to know God in a deeper level. Those trees, ash. You are in the right place, my daughter. William Aqua, my, my son, says, I am expecting a testimony and a testimony you will have. Glory to Jesus. Catherine Ganga says, recovery all round. Fiesti says, I want settlement maritally. Guys, don't just read. If you know you are single, want somebody say marital settlement. You don't need to go further. This is an answered prayer. <laughs> Linda Paul says, I want to see the mighty God, Jehovah El Gibor. Abigail says, divine elevation. Bonnie Prince says, to get to know God in deeper dimensions. Lorna in Jerry says, hunger for more of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Let's pray. Spirit of God, we adore you today. Thank you for the entrance of your word, which brings light. And that gives understanding also to the simple. Tonight we declare that let the portals of the spirit open and let somebody, oh God, be escorted into dimensions of Rima that they are not accustomed to. Move in this place, throw your weights about, flaunt your glory. I pray, Spirit of God, that you will interject these proceedings and drop a testimony. And let somebody rejoice in Jesus' precious name. And amen. somebody say, Amen. Amen. Well, before I preach, my daughter <laughs> from the States, the one, Esinam, will give us a solo. Esinam, just give us one solo. Yes, perfect. Okay. You take what is and you make it beautiful. Thank you, Lord. When love floods in, we're restored forevermore. With breath that brings the dead to life, with words that pierce the dark with light, only by the blood are we set free. With mercy strong to carry shame and nail it to the tree, you alone hold the power to redeem. No guilt compete with innocence crucified. No grave can hold what your grace has justified. With bread that brings the dead to life, with words that pierce the dark with light, only by the blood are we set free. With mercy strong to carry shame and nail it to a tree, you alone hold the power to redeem. You alone. Hold the power to redeem. Amen. Wow. That was powerful. God bless you. God bless you so much. Glory to God. Tonight, I want to start what I call a revolution. I want to start a revolution. We are doing the subject manif manifestation of your prophetic word. Manifestation of your prophetic word. Manifestation 
of your prophetic word. I want your hands to get busy. And I still want us to invite people, invite somebody, send a link to somebody and invite somebody because what I have to share with you today would revolutionize the rest of your life. That much I know. I've been in prayer and I've been trusting the Lord and counting down the clock for this particular engagement. And I believe that tonight is an exclusive night for somebody. I don't know who that person is. I don't know who that person is. But if you know you are that person, let your hands get busy. Hallelujah. I have been in the presence of the Lord. I have worked with the Lord. I have stood in the capacity of a prophet. By the grace of God, I don't minister with the prophetic gift. There is a difference between ministry with the gift and staying in the office. When God called me like Jeremiah, he separated me exclusively onto the office of the prophetic. And in various capacities, I have stood declaring the oracles of God. One of the things, ladies and gentlemen, that I have discovered as the resolution that defines the beauty of a man's destiny in God is what I call manifestation. If your destiny is devoid of manifestation, you will be grounded in life. If your Christian work is devoid of manifestations, ladies and gentlemen, you will literally become a mockery and a scorn to those that know you. Yesterday I was ministering somewhere and I told them that when somebody who wasn't a believer, first, when the person was in the world, all the person wanted, she had. I mean, the average lady that was that was that was not a believer had so many sugar daddies. So uh, iPhone 12 Pro wasn't a problem for her. Now this lady is told that you have to stop all those shakara and give your life to Christ. Now she gives her life to Christ, and a tokumba phone is even a problem now. You understand? And so sometimes we are, listen guys, sometimes we are simply satisfied with nothing. We are simply satisfied with nothing, almost as if that we, we live in the Christian life as though it is a religion. And so the satisfaction we derive has to do with the appeasement of our consciences that we prayed, we went to church and we gave. There is nothing called expectation or there is nothing called manifestation that we are able to lay hold on to. And so for many of you, there are things you have been believing God for from only God knows when. And you are content that you don't have it because you have built a theology for yourself and your theology is that maybe it is not God's time. Tonight, I declare, let it be God's time for your life. Amen. Amen. Be a night of visitation Amen. for you. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is that has become a mirage, whatever it is that has become just a dream, by the time we finish this broadcast, I declare, enter realms of manifestation. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The beauty of Christianity is manifestation. Acts chapter 2 verse 22, as Peter was advancing a defense concerning Jesus Christ, the Bible said he spoke to them, he says, men of, men of Nazareth, you saw Jesus, a man approved unto God with miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, miracles, signs, and wonders are what we call the, the emanations of manifestations. That means that your life should be a working miracle. Ye men of Israel, hear the words, or hear, hear this word, Jesus of Nazareth, a man, a proof of God among you by miracles. That means that the approval of the called is by miracles. Hear this, if you are writing, write this. What silences insult is not another word, is 
resolves. What silences insult is resolved. I pray for 30 of you on this call from today. Enter resolves. Amen. Enter dimensions Amen. of resolves. At your workplace, mm -hmm. enter resource. At your home, enter resource. In your various places, mm -hmm. enter resource. Realms of resource and realms of manifestations. If I see your amen, you shall enter resource in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Ah, uh, are you still here, guys? Yes. Do not be satisfied with hearing about the promises of God. Do not. Do not be satisfied with just receiving prophetic messages. You need to get to the next level where you are able to wage warfare and meddle in the weightier matters of the prophetic word so that the prophetic word begin to find expressions in your destiny. Oh, tonight will be your night. Amen. 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 In my spirit, somebody will enter manifestations. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let me show you a quick scripture and let's do this together. Proverbs 25, verse 2 and 3. Proverbs 25, verse 2 and 3. You will love this scripture. Proverbs chapter 25, verse number 2. And verse number three, he says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Oh, but yes. the honor of kings to search out a matter. Fetic word has in it divine secrets that makes for manifestation. Every prophecy. Somebody is giving me a feedback. The person wants to prophesy to. Okay. Every prophecy, every promise has within its capacity what I call divine secrets that makes for manifestations. I want you to listen carefully. Manifestations doesn't happen to casual believers. Hmm. Manifestations doesn't happen to complainers, if there is a word like that. Manifestations happen to men and women who have pledged a cause to search out matters regarding their prophetic word. Hmm. Amen. He says literally that it is the hobby of God. He brings God glory when he conceals a matter. But it is your honor as a king in the kingdom to search out those matters. Hey, <laughs> are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. Watch this. The secret that peruses your greatness is a trade secret in God's kingdom. And what he does is that he jealously guides those secrets so that your enemy is unable to predict your next move. Come on now. Hallelujah. So that by the time you go on an expedition to search the matters out, you and God will be the only people that have the blueprints of your greatness. Am I talking to somebody here? Mm -hmm. So the glory of God is to conceal a matter. There is a matter about your destiny. There is a matter about your ministry. There is a matter about your, your marital breakthrough. 
There is a matter that peruses your life. And that matter, the Bible said that God has concealed it. Read your Bible. He says, the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. There are deep things in God, and those deep things are secured in the vault of God for your discovery. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that when a man, listen carefully, because I'm going to put on you a responsibility. I have heard and I'm sick and tired of hearing it. People say, well, prophet, I got a message and nothing has happened. You see, nothing happened because you were excited at the message. And, and, and rightly so, everybody that gets a prophetic message gets excited. But the excitement alone does not guarantee manifestation. Manifestation is an exclusive undertaking of a man that is desiring to see Search out the matters. Come on now. Come on. Hmm. Am I helping somebody here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, sir. now watch this. Daniel chapter number nine, verse two. Let me just do a quick, a quick detour. Daniel chapter number nine. Let's do from verse number two. Verse number two, number three, number four. Number two, number three, number four, Daniel chapter nine. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, in the first year of the reign, of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books. I understood by books. The number of the years where, where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of, of Jerusalem. Verse number three, he says, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Now, this is a presentation of a seeker. Daniel is a politician. Daniel is a prophet. Now, he saw the exile of Israel in the land of the Babylonians were prolonging. Listen, guys, hear this. You are not the first person to say that God gave you a timeline for your prophetic manifestation and it didn't come to pass. You are not the first person. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Genesis chapter 15, Bible said, God had told the children of Israel, you are going to be in captivity for 400 years. We read the captivity of the children of Israel. It extended to, it extended to, for another 30 more years. For another 30 more years. So that your prophecy has delayed that your manifestation has delayed. You are not the first person. But you see, tonight, I don't ever want you to come to that place where your prophecy will delay. And I'm going to show you step by step how you'll be able to hijack your prophetic message and produce manifestation. Amen. Amen. And I want us to, let, let, let us divide the responsibilities. Hear this. <laughs> When a word drops from the lips of God, it is not the responsibility of God to make the word come to pass. Mm, that's true. Proverbs, we read chapter 25, he said that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search out those matters. So let's put responsibility right where it belongs. The responsibility of searching out the matters of your life is your sole responsibility. Of course, it is in partnership with God. Amen. But God will not pray for you. Oh, yes. God will not give for you. God oh, yes. will not sacrifice for you. God oh, will yes. not worship for you. God will not fast for you. So oh, if yes. you're always eating chapati, eating ugali, you'll be so far from manifestation. 
<laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes, you are. Amen. So Daniel was in exile. Through the manifestation of his gifts and his talent, he became a politician, a very revered politician. But as he was there, he said suddenly, I discovered that our exile, our captivity is prolonging. So let me go on a searching spree to find answers, to embellish my soul with answers, to find out why things are the way they are. Here it is. One of the cardinal features of a seeker is that a seeker doesn't get satisfied. A seeker is always finding out why things are delayed. Mm. God, you promised me 2021 is going to be my year of manifestation financially. Why is it delaying? A man that is on a quest to find answers is a man that will enter places of manifestations. Many of us, instead of asking questions and to dish out the matters and to explore dimensions in God, we are in the hell hole of, of depression and stress and we are complaining. If you are writing, write this. Complaining can incapacitate you and cause your prophetic manifestation to delay unduly. A man that is always complaining is a man that has willfully prolonged his manifestation. Oh, you guys are so quiet. I don't know if you are complaining already. No, we're here. All right. So Daniel is saying, Daniel said, when I saw that the prophecy by Jeremiah is delayed, eh? I understood by the books. Question, do you understand the word you received? My God. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, guys. Help us, the word of God has three dimensions. A lot of preachers don't know this. They are only concentrated in two. We have what we call the written word. The written word is called the graphy. Some preachers have said the written word is logos. No. The written word which you read, which is accessible in every library in this world, the written word which even the Muslims read is called what? The graphy. Then we have what we call the mind behind the written words. The mind behind the written word is also called the logos. When a man reads the written word by the spirit of God, he has access to the mind of God, the logos. Now, your access to the mind of God is what gives you what we call understanding. So two believers can read the same word. In, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, should not perish, but have an everlasting life. This is common. Two believers are friends, or two individuals are friends. One person will have a deeper understanding because he graciously had an escort into the mind of the author, who is God, behind the word he just read. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching. Preaching good. Yeah, preaching right. good. So, the Logos is the mind of God. But the Logos is so vast. And so, beyond the Logos, there is a session of the Logos that addresses your individual need. We call that in Rima. Okay? Now, Every miracle thrives on the wheels of Rima. But you don't get to Rima until you have first read the graphy. Mm. 
and you don't get to the next level of the logos until you have been escorted by the Holy Ghost. I tell people, don't just read the Bible. Take your time. You are not going to do a quiz with anybody. This Bible is a manual of your life. Now, you don't have to casually read it. For you to know the manual of your life, you have to spend time meditating. Amen. I will not spank you because you didn't read the whole chapter. I would rather you read one verse and exhausted the depths and the demographics of that one verse than to read a whole chapter and don't understand anything. A story is told in Acts chapter 8. The Bible says that Philip met the Ethiopian Enoch, the guy that was going to worship in Jerusalem. And as the guy was in his chariots, the Bible says he started reading the, 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 the prophets. He started reading about the prophets and the prophecies about Jesus. And then the Spirit of God told Philip, he says, go and join yourself to that chariot. And when he joined himself, he saw the man was reading. A man that has taken a pilgrimage from Ethiopia and is going to Jerusalem to worship didn't understand what he was reading. Philip said, do you understand what you are reading? Then the man said, Why? how will I understand unless somebody guides me? Hear this. For a man to have understanding, he has to be guided. Amen has to be guided. Yes, thank you, Stella. Acts chapter 8, verse 31. He says, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this. God will not bypass his word and do anything for you. And I'm going to show you and I'm going to blow your mind right now because see, manifestation doesn't become visible in the earthly, earthly space or the realm of the physical until you are able to hijack it in the spirit. Am I helping you today? Oh, yes. Yes. So he said that, how can I understand except some man should guide me? Guys, guys, hear this. It should worry you if you are exposed to a particular voice for several times and that voice brings confusion to your head. I am in that place of my life where I am very selective the kind of things I, I read, the kind of things I expose my ears to. Mm. Are you listening to me, guys? Oh, yes. Because... Because understanding is what graciously gives you access to the mind of God concerning you. And when a man is able to get to the mind of God, that man is able to know what the mind of God says about his issues. And that is what we call manifestations. Amen. So the journey begins from inquisition. You ask yourself questions. I am 45. Why am I not married? Am I not beautiful? Am I not handsome? Am I not whatever? So you start asking questions. Number two, the questions should not be a one-off question you casually would just wobble in your mind with. But it is, you sit down and you begin to to engage the, what we call the force of reason. The force of reason. Ay, Jesus, so many things I want to share with you today. Do you know that, ladies and gentlemen, God truly doesn't have favorite. God has a God. Doesn't have favorite. He doesn't decide to say, um, Stella is my favorite. Maybe Josephine is not my favorite. He doesn't start off that. It is the man that works his way into the heart of God that makes God make him his favorite. Am I helping you here? So you can make you can make God make you his favorite. If that is if that English is okay, 
you can make God make you his favorite. In 2021, please don't be everywhere. In 2021, don't have a lot of friends. In 2021, go on a searching spree because, listen, there is more to your life than what you are currently living. There is more. Hear this. And everybody on this call, there are over 43 people on this call, everybody hear me. I believe without a shadow of doubt, you were made for the nations. Amen. 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 I believe without a shadow of doubt that your financial exploit should not know bounds. That Amen. you can be in Kenya, you can be in Ghana, you can be in South Africa, you can be in the US. Yes, yet God will give you accesses to other nations and you have, you have assets in other nations. I believe without a shadow of doubt. Amen. Amen. Question, are you willing to work with God, for God to cause you to see the vistas of what he has in store for you. Daniel said, I understood by books the prophecy of Jeremiah concerning the desolation of Jerusalem. And when I discovered that time has passed and time has elapsed, then I set my face to seek the Lord. Verse 3. I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications. Right here in our church, Glory Land Embassy, next month we are starting seven days and everyone on this call, you are supposed to join us with the seven days. This year, I'm going to push you hard. I'm going to push you hard because I realize, ladies and gentlemen, hear this. The Bible said, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit mm. until you have been able to beat your body and put your body under sub uh, subjection and until you are able to mutilate your body and awaken your spirit, you will not be able to lay hold of what God has in store for you. A woman, her name is Anna, she was over 80 years. Bible says she served the Lord with fastings and prayers day and night. She served the Lord with fastings and prayers day and night. Fastings and prayers day and night. It was not a one-off experience. At the time when death she come upon her and take her because she had the prophecy that she will not taste death till she sees the Messiah. The Bible says she lived and saw the Messiah. Hear this, ladies and gentlemen. Fastings and praying is not a punishment. It is your divine access to the spiritual world. Some of you have to cut your meal. You eat three square meals. Look at you. Three. <laughs> three meals. Eh, Jesus. Three. Then you say square meal. Three square meal. How can you square three? I'm not, I'm not <laughs> Hallelujah. You cut your food and live a faster life. One meal a day is enough. At least you can try and drink some tea, tea somewhere, but you see. Because I'm telling you, by the time you are praying and you are belching, you know that your prayer is an offense even to God. You pray while you belch three. Pray while you belch three. Pray while you belch three. Hey, Jesus. Very soon, all the angels will leave you. <laughs> <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, oh, yes, you are. Let me tell you something, guys, and this will bless you. God has a stake in every prophetic word he gives you. Read your Bible. 
Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds and glorify your father who is in heaven. Now, light is a typology of manifestation. So, he says, when you begin to manifest, the people around you will see your good deeds. And then, because God has wrapped his glory around your manifestation, the people will give glory to God. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, oh, yes. the integrity yes. of God does not permit him to bend the rules to favor you. And I'm saying this reservedly. The integrity of God may he, uh, uh, the, two things, the integrity of God and also your sonship in him may not necessarily cause him to bend the rules. As a son, what he does is that he puts you into training. Galatians 4, he says the heir, as long as he is a child, differs not from the servant, but that heir is under tutors and governors until the time appointed by the father. So because you are a son, because you are a daughter, God will take you through processes Somebody type processes. Type it, say processes. And I'm going somewhere with this. I don't want to, I don't want to lose you. God will take you through processes. Mm -hmm. Now, huh. if you get what I'm sharing with you tonight, life will be very easy. The influence of every process you are going through now and its impact on your life is severely influenced by perception. Somebody type perception. How you perceive whatever you are going through is what empowers what you are going through to either overcome you or you overcome it perception <laughs> eh? write this it will bless you by the time god is giving you a promise he has factored all your enemies into that promise as a matter of fact he will assess the weaknesses the strength and then he will conclude that you have the power to defeat the enemy then on the basis of that, he gives you the promise. Oh, that was a clapping and a shouting spot right there, right there, right there, right there. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Watch this. Do you think that God is daft? That he told the children of Israel, I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. That land is called Cana. And by the time Israel got there, there were giants in that land called the Canaanites or the Canaanites. Didn't God see them? God saw them, yet he said, the land is for you. So this is your word, somebody, that there is a Canaanite on your Canaan does not mean you can't possess it. Amen. We call it perception. Now, the perception I'm talking about was brought to the fore when Joshua has sent the spies, Caleb and Co. When they came, one of them said, eh, this giant, we can't destroy them. Caleb said, ah, but these guys, we will destroy them. Two people were exposed to the same process, the same process, and then they had different perceptions. Preach it. Ladies and gentlemen, when your ability to see through the lenses of faith is what we call the perception of the spirit. One, one is seeing a problem. Another is seeing a stepping stone. Mm. Question. When you look, what do you see?
When you look, what do you see? Five years you've been out of job. When you look into that, that life of yours, what do you see? Seven years of your life, no man wants to settle with you. When you look at that issue, what do you see? Perception. Hmm. All this while, Moses has been holding a rod. In a sense, a staff. By the time God told him, throw that thing away. In other words, until you come to a place where you, you are able to discard your own man-made monuments. You will not begin to see from the spirit what God really wants you to see. This guy has always been holding a staff. He didn't know that that staff is the rod of God. He didn't know it is the same stuff that will turn into a snake that will swallow the snakes in the, in the, in the palace of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Question, do you know what you have? People go like, well, probably no. I don't understand why things are bad. I don't understand why nothing is happening. I don't understand why everybody is against me. Even me, I don't understand why you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening, guys? One of the ways, ladies and gentlemen, for you to get into a place where you'll be able to hijack your prophetic message, your prophetic word, and bring it into manifestation is to change the way you perceive your process. Some processes, read your Bible. Look at chapter number four. Hmm. Oh, my father, I love you, Jesus. Verse 1. Verse 1. Let me just help you. Am I helping somebody here today? Look yes. at chapter number 4. Verse 1. And Jesus, then Jesus, being be filled with the Holy Spirit. Returned from the Jordan. And was led by the same Spirit. Into the wilderness. I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you wrap your mind around this? Oh my God. The Spirit has... Brought him out of Jordan. Look at Jordan when he was being baptized. Look at the glamour, the pageantry of God as the heavens ripped open and God bellowed from the corridors of eternity. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Everybody now focus on this masterpiece of a creature called Jesus. And after this whole drama, this whole excitement, this whole, this whole manifestation, the same spirit spirit led him to the wilderness wow. would you be able to know that it is the spirit that instigated whatever you are calling delays it is the spirit that did it all oh, life becomes easy if you know who is behind what Life becomes easy if you begin to know who is behind what so that you don't bind what you should lose and you don't lose what you should bind hmm. The spirit led Jesus to the wilderness to do what? To be tempted. The spirit. You are praying, Father, make me a prophet. Make me a household name. My father, my father, my father, my father. You are running away from your process. How else will your testimony bless us if you've not gone through anything? Hmm. How would we appreciate the depth of your testimony if we can't fit our own adventures into your own adventure? Am I blessing somebody here? Oh, yes. God loves Jesus. In fact, he's a model of God's love. But by the time destiny beckoned on him, 
at Gethsemane, he prayed, if it be thy will, let this cup pass over me. Mm. It was this same Jesus who stood at the entrance of the tomb of Lazarus and lifted his voice and said, Father, I thank you, you hear me always. Mm -hmm. But on this occasion, the father seemingly was not hearing him. After one hour, he came back. Father, in case you have forgotten, I'm saying, let this car pass over me. Nothing changed. Another hour came, nothing changed. You know why? God has a stake in your destiny. Mm. There are things he may give to you without, without some consideration, you know, some things, some shillings and some things. But if you want to make impact that will transcend the generations, God definitely has a stake in it and he will take you through processes. Amen. Amen. Oh, he will, he will. He will. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He will. So one of the things you have, I, I, God will not do this for you. One of the things that you have to really understand is how to think and bring your mind to alignment. And in case you can't, just pray, Lord, show me, show me, let me know what you are saying in this matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It will take stress away from you. Job 14, 14. Job chapter 14, verse 14. <laughs> Job chapter 14, verse 14. You will love this scripture, I'm telling you. <laughs> Look at what Job is saying. If a man dies... Shall he live again? Then he said, all the days of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. Hmm. The King James says that all the days of my appointed time, will I wait until my change comes? All the days of my appointed time. He says, I will wait until my change comes. Let me read it again. Can somebody? Aha, uh -huh, good, Stella, thank you. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. A man, a woman whose destiny would change the narratives in the family. That man, that woman, one way or the other in the trajectory of their destiny will have to wait till change comes. <laughs> preachers don't help us. And preachers are not so balanced. Preachers present the issues and the matters of destiny and, uh, so, so, so simplistic. And they whip up our expectation. And so when we are able to sustain expectation for one month and nothing happens, then we wobble. We wobble. And then we begin to question God. And some of us are... We are still, we still revere him, so we will not question him audibly. But in the ponderings of our hearts, we, we, we say things that we can't say with our mouths. Ladies and gentlemen, if God has a stake in your destiny, if God has a stake in your marriage, if God has a stake in your job, you may have to wait until change comes. And this is the good news. Change will come. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Somebody didn't hear me. I said change will come. Amen. I'm mm. going to show you something. Look at it. Preachers, we, we, preachers preach about Joseph. 
Oh, I'm like those kind of preachers, especially the kind that will say, and Joseph dreamt another dream, and Joseph dreamt again, and the stars and the moon and the sun were bowing to Joseph. Hear this. From when he saw the vision of the stars to where, when he saw the manifestation, what did he go through? Process. Somebody say process. 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 He went through process. And listen, I'm going to simplify it to you because, because the, the writer of the psalm also simplified it. I believe in, uh, let me show you quickly, Psalm 105. You will love this scripture. Psalm 105, verse 17 to 20. Psalm 105, verse 17 to 20. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Who was born in June 9th, between June 9th and June 8th? Is there anybody on this call who was born in June 9th or June 8th? Aha. Uh -huh. Psalm 105, verse 17. <laughs> now, this is talking about Joseph. He says, he sent a man before them. Now, take your time, everyone. When we finish the broadcast, take your time and read Psalm 105. You, will, you understand it. He says that God sent a man before them. Who are the them? The children of Israel. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. Now, watch this. All we knew was that Joseph had had a dream. But it took the revelation in Psalm 105 for us to know that Joseph was actually on an assignment. That God was behind all the orchestrations in his life. You know why? Because God had a stake in it. How else would Israel have gone into captivity in Egypt if not Joseph? Am I talking to somebody here? So watch this. He says, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They had his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Verse 19. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Hey, Jesus. Stella, are you listening? I'm listening. All this while we were busy breaking and cursing the Midianites. And cursing the father, we bind them. Any spirit behind Pharaoh, we were even preaching against Potiphar's wife. You know this woman, you see, I've been thinking about this woman. This woman was nearing her menopause. And at that time of nearing your menopause, libido is zero. So who really aroused the libido of Mrs. Potiphar for her to last after Joseph? At the, at the risk of confusing all of you, me, I'm not saying it is God, but this is giving me a clue that something may have incited Mrs. Potiphar. For the first time in her menopausal life, she had libido. <laughs> hey! Am I helping somebody here? Oh, yes. He says, until the time that his word came to pass, he says, the word of the Lord tried him. So the word of the Lord was what was finding expressions in Potiphar's wife, finding expressions in those guys, the, 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 the brothers of Joseph, as they sold him, as they dug a pit and put him in there. They, listen, guys, they were literally puppets in the hands of God as God was churning out his purpose in the life of Joseph. Mm. hear this, if it is destiny the word of God will try you if it is destiny the word of God will try you 
Many of us have delayed our prophetic manifestation unduly. We have delayed our prophetic manifestation unduly because we, we didn't see the invincible hand of God that is at work. Read your Bible. Romans chapter 8, Paul was also giving us the same credence to these things I'm sharing. He said that all things work together for the good to them that love God. That means that it didn't start off as good. But by the time it is destiny, all things will work together for good. Mm. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Okay? I'm so perception good. is so important. Perception is so important. Listen. One day I was praying for a certain woman. We're trusting the Lord for her for the fruit of the womb. We prayed. We did everything we know to do prophetically. And God said something that was very intriguing. He said that you are fighting. This lady wants to get pregnant, pregnant, pregnant. But you see, this baby that has to be born, has to be born within a certain timeline. Within a certain timeline. Because this child is going to fulfill destiny. So the child cannot be born a year before, two years before, or three years ahead. No, it has to be within a stipulated time that God has allotted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we were busy binding the witches in the hometown. We were busy prescribing all the concoctions. Mm -hmm. But when God told us this, I said, ah, you go, go. When the time comes, I will tell you, your husband will summon sort of you and that will be the beginning of your exploit. <laughs> I'll just say, go, you go and sing the Lord's song in a strange land when that comes, that time comes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have to be very, very spiritual in our perception about our lives. Let me tell you something. Do you think there are so many of you on this call who are who are mothers? Now, as a mother, if your child does anything wrong to you and you stay in a neighborhood with a very wicked neighbor, you know this neighbor is very wicked, he's an occulting, he does human sacrifice. Would you call that neighbor to come and punish your child for you? No, guys, let's talk. Would you? You wouldn't. You won't call your, your occultic neighbor. Hey, my daughter just... Uh, now, if you will not do that, how then do you think that God would need Satan to punish you? Hmm. People go like, you say, God, God has permitted this sickness. You know, God, God has permitted this. God knows that. So, <laughs> so a young man was praying for financial breakthrough. It wasn't happening. He said, the, then the, the young man said, maybe God doesn't want me to be rich because maybe he thinks that when I'm rich, I will lose my salvation. I say, see, see this mumu. <laughs> 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 you lose your salvation. You see, perception. And we are unable to diagnose the processes we go through through the lenses of the spirit. And that is what we have to, because see, sometimes, listen, when you come to a place of knowing that God has a plan, hey, Jesus, yes, study God carefully. Don't rush, just study him. What he does, and God is very, he's expert at doing these things. As soon as you pray, he tells you the end. So all this prophecy, I see the realm of the spirit, I see financial breakthrough, I see your millionaire. It is your end, like it is. It is the end. But he's not, he he will not give you the clue as to how to get to that financial breakthrough. It is the honor of kings to search out how to get there. And this is what God does. He kills. Two bears with one stone. This is what he does. He allows you to chase after him. 
so that in your chasing after him, you develop a depth in him. So what does he get from you? He gets a relationship. And then he gets the glory. You get your excitement because you are married. You get your peace because you are married. You get your fulfillment because you are married. But he gets a relationship so that by the time you have married, he will still have you so that the marriage will not disconnect you from him. Amen. Oh, yes, it's true. People mm. married and when they got married, their husbands told them, don't go to that church again. Mm. Don't pray again. So by the time you have, you have come to a place where you love God more than what he gives you, he knows he can entrust you with so many things and you won't turn your back against him. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes, you are. Listen, maybe there are so many things I want to share with you. I just saw the time we've done close to an hour and 30 minutes. Let me take three questions and then we'll begin to pray. We'll do season two of this next week. Let me take two questions. Stella, coordinate questions quickly. If there's anybody who has a question, thank you, Prophet, for that amazing presentation and profound word. If there's anybody who has a question, please raise up your hand or type it up on the chat. If you want to seek any clarification, if there's something the prophet has explained that you haven't understood, this is a good time for you to ask. Anyone question? Um, prophet, there's a question from Julia. Uh, the question is, how do you know you are being tested by the word of God? How do you know that you are being tested by the word of God? Okay. All right, Kathy. Yes, I just read your message. Okay, so let me tell you something, guys. Romans chapter number eight should answer this question. You see, for several years, preachers taught the people that they have to pray some kind of prayers to know whether they are in the will of God or not. And many of you have, who have been with us for, for long, I did a presentation on the will of God. The Bible says that of his will has he begotten us with the word of truth. Stella, look for that scripture in James. Of his own will has he begotten us. That will be a kind of first fruit of his creation. So every believer, who, when you gave your life to Christ, you were born into the word of God. So everything you go through from thence, you go through them because of the stipulations of the word of God. All right? Of course, there are dimensions where you go through satanic attacks. Satan will come at you and all that. Those ones, you begin to pray. You begin to pray and the spirit of God will show you the source of those attacks. But whenever you are, if you are born again, you are born into the will of God. That is why he says in Romans chapter 8, all things work together for good to them that love God and to the called according to his purpose. James and chapter, Stella, which chapter is that? James 1.18. James 1.18 says, of his own will, will, of his own will, begat he us with the word of truth. So it is the word of truth that, that, that begat us. We are born again by the word of truth. And the word of truth is the will of God. The believer is not out of the will of God. The believer is in the will of God. The will of God is not just a destination. The will of God is also a bigger place. 
where you explore, where you fine tune, okay? You fine tune your place in God. So when you start the adventure as a believer, you walk in that adventure. You walk in that way. Have I answered Julia's question? Julia, I believe you're content with the answer. And Prophet, there's another question coming from Floki. What's okay. the difference between Rema and God's Oracle? Okay. So in the days of old, all the prof what the prophet had, we so we, we call what the prophet had had um, theologically, we call them messianic prophecies. Messianic prophecies. So those times, all the prophet, what they had was what we call oracle. Okay. And Kenyans, you have a lady oracle in your in your in your nation. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a title, it, it doesn't have any theological significance. Every word that a prophet has is an oracle. And Rima is simply the word that addresses your individual need. The word for you per time is Rima. Loki, please confirm on the chat that you're content. Uh, prophet Elijah, Kevin Elijah is asking, mm -hmm. what happens when one aborts a process that's quitting instead of enduring or abiding? Okay, truth of the matter is this, eh? <laughs> when when you are going through your process okay let me let me explain with the scripture let's let, let's do let's do the romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 i think the the last three verses of romans chapter 8 i, I like the the question of kelvin the last three verses yes Okay, so you realize that, aha, uh -huh. good. So after Paul has spoken about all things work together for good to them that love God, blah, blah, blah. Verse 36 says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the, for the slaughter. Now Paul now is talking about some of the uncomfortable situations we can go through, probable situations we can go through. Then he says that in those situations, we are counted as sheep to, for the slaughter. Then he says something interesting in verse 37. He says, nay. So, so you see that we are going through, it's like we are we are sheep that is go, heading towards the slaughter. But that really is not it. Here is the perception. He says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Okay, then he begins to say, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, things, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So Elijah, this is it. There is... And, and this, I don't know, I don't know if your pastor will agree with me, but go tell your pastor I said it. No believer, no believer truncates processes. By the time you're saying, ah, I have given up, I quit. In the hands of God, no. Oh, let me look for a scripture. Let's do this scripture. I think it's in Psalm 37. Elijah will love this scripture. Just a minute. Psalm 37 verse 27, 23. Psalm 37 verse 23. 23 and 24. Psalm 37, 23, 24. Aha. Uh -huh. Elijah, look at it. He said the steps of a good man Hey, hey, Jesus, are ordered by the Lord, and the Lord delights in his ways. Verse 24 is what blows, blows me away. He says, though he fall. Mm -hmm. Hey, but Stella, we just read that the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. Oh, yes. 
So if God is the one ordering your step, why is he saying, though he fall? Because it is expected that you will fall at some point. Exactly. So God will order your step and he will factor your fall into the ordering. He will map up a strategy. He will map up what we call your journey. And then he will tell you at the age of 23, somebody will molest you, break your virginity. You will cry, 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 cry. You even contemplate suicide. You go and buy poison, rat poison. You will drink, you will not die. Your sofa got so bad, they will take you to uh, Nairobi West Clinic. You will be there. It is when you are there with all the drip and all the nosopharyngeal tubes inside you that I will appear to you in my vision, in a vision. When I appear to you in a vision, I'll begin to explain to you that you are not just uh, somebody that has been molested. You are a prophetess unto the nations Amen. god is ordering your steps hallelujah <laughs> okay now if you understand life that way i'm telling you life becomes very easy he said mm. though he fall he shall not utterly be cast down why for the lord upholded him with his hands mm. so the truth is that you fell it is not the falling that is the issue where did you fall you fell in the in the hands of the Lord. So you didn't go anywhere. You were still dear. You were still in the will of God. So just clean your ass and just continue your journey. If you trip, you still continue. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Have I answered him? Elijah, I hope you're content with that answer. I do not see another question, Prophet. I don't have any hands up. Good. Unless someone has a pending question. Good. Anybody going once, twice? Excellent. Elijah is blessed. I think that All should right. be perfect. Okay. All right. Now, this is a prayer I want us to pray. We are just going to pray. We are just going to pray this prayer for like 10 minutes. You really have to listen. You have to listen. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. is a popular scripture. Some of you can even quote it. <coughs> Rocky, that, those verses, are, I think it's Romans and chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 37 to 39. So, yeah. Rocky. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I want us to read that scripture because we are going to pray with that scripture. It says, for I know the thoughts. Somebody say thoughts. Thoughts. Mm -hmm. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God is not idling, idling in heaven. He's thinking. And he's thinking about you. He is not thinking a new thought. He is thinking a thought that he has been thinking way before you were born. Some of you do remember before the foundation of the world and from the foundation of the world. Go and look for that teaching. It will bless you. So he's thinking about us. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Hmm. There is something about this scripture that doesn't add up. He said the thoughts that I'm thinking about you, that thought would give you an expected end. Not that thought is the expected end. Mm -hmm. But that thought that I'm thinking towards you, when you are able to unravel that thought, it will give you an expected end. <laughs> Does it make sense, guys? Hey, you guys are quiet. Where are you folks? We're here, Prophet. Uh -huh. You know, we've been reading this scripture. We've been reading it and quoting it. But let's mm -hmm. read it again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Yeah. Say the Lord. Thoughts of peace. And not of evil. 
the thoughts of peace that I'm thinking towards you will give you an expected end. Are you catching it? Mm. Are you catching it, guys? Mm. Now, by this scripture, God has given us a clue, a roadmap, a blueprint to what we call manifestation. Manifestation is the expected end. What is that blueprint? What is that, what is that tool? Thoughts of peace. Mm -hmm. Thoughts of peace. Now, if God is thinking thoughts of peace about you, and you are there in Nairobi Kikuyu, and you are thinking thoughts of depression, thoughts of shame, thoughts of demonic manifestation, demonic oppression, you can thought of impossibilities. You can never come to their expected end. So God is saying that I am conscious of the kind of thought I am thinking towards you. The kind of thought I'm thinking towards you is a thought of peace. And this thought of peace I'm thinking towards you will give you an expected end. Do you get this, guys? <laughs> mm -hmm. It will give you an expected end. Guys, hear this. This is scary. It also means that a man, God has given the prerogative to a man to decide how his expected end should be. And he has given us what we can use to get to that expected end. He says, thoughts of shalom, thoughts of peace. Hmm. Hmm. We are going to pray. Read your Bible. Say the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and any proud thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is our prayer, that in the name of the Lord Jesus, may the Spirit of God empower our thoughts and cause us to begin to think the thoughts of God as we navigate towards an expected end, in the name of Jesus, two minutes, lift your voice and pray. Or mute yourself so that iron sharpen it iron, so that as I hear you pray, I will be encouraged to also pray. Lift your voice and pray. <laughs> God, we declare the name of Sampa <laughs> <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Yes, our last prayer. We are praying. Somebody type thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. There is somebody, the Lord is telling me that you live in fear, constant fear. Constant fear. And somebody, the Lord is also telling me that you've been at that place of, in your life where you, you have been you have been so hemmed in and you don't even believe that anything good can come out of your life. I displace that stronghold mm. in your life. Amen. I displace it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mm. That the hand of the Lord will rest mightily on you. Amen. The hand of the Lord will rest mightily on you. Amen. Let your mind be flooded with possibilities. Let the light of heaven be thrown towards you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. By the force of peace, I calm every raging storm in your life. I come against every wandering spirit and wandering mind in the name of Jesus. And I declare that Amen. the hand of the Lord will bring you to an expected end Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord is telling me, thank you, Holy Spirit. Is there, is there a place in Nairobi called Chuka? Chuka? It's outside Nairobi. It's outside Nairobi. Yes, in somewhere in the central part of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Who who is connected to Chuka? Is it close to is it close to Meru? It's in Meru. It's in Meru. Who is connected to that place? Me, Papa. Lona. Lona, you are connected to that place. Lloyd it comes from. That's where you come from. Lloyd. Lloyd comes from Chuka. Okay, Lloyd, your your husband. I pray. Any satanic machination, satanic projection of limitation, mm. 
-hmm. whatever it is that they buried at that place that has stagnated the life of your husband and even your family today i break it in jesus amen i travel by the wing of the spirit to yes. chuck her and i correct mm. everything that they that they did against your husband anything from his father's lineage that is affecting his life i break it now by the power of the holy ghost amen. and i connect anybody whose destiny has been held up by satanic mm. forces i connect them to this prayer i command mm. that power broken from their lives in the mighty name, in the of, name of the lord jesus amen. i release liberty into your life in Jesus' Amen. name. The Lord says to tell you, in the next 14 days, he's giving you a sign, a testimony, a huge Amen. testimony coming Amen. your way in Jesus' name. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 The Lord is telling me there is somebody on this call and you have to you have to identify yourself by you uh, at the comment session. You, have, you, you come very close to a breakthrough very close to a breakthrough very close to a breakthrough but it doesn't happen the law says that tonight keys have been released keys Amen. have been released. prophetic Amen. keys for your next level have been released miriam Amen. in the name Amen. of the lord jesus i curse the power fighting that destiny of yours in the name of jesus and i release Amen. you miriam, in the name of jesus and causes and i release your keys in the name of Amen. jesus when you hear it you will experience Amen. it in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. When they promise you, they will fulfill it. In the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the power of the Holy Ghost. William, the Lord just told me, he says, they will call you. William, the Lord says, they will call you. They will Amen. call you. They will call you. Amen. I connect everybody Amen. who in need of a prophetic manifestation. Mm -hmm. Anyone that must call mm -hmm. you for your good news, I prophesy, mm -hmm. they will call you. Amen. They will call you. They will Amen. call you. By the straight hand of God, we move them to call you. Mm -hmm. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. I hear in the spirit, finishing anointing. Finishing oh, anointing. Hallelujah. Finishing yes. anointing. Finishing yes. anointing. I don't know who is connecting to this. Anyone that has started yes. something, be empowered to finish it. Amen. Empowered to finish it. Amen. Empowered to finish it. Amen. Amen. Anyone that has promised you anything, be yes. empowered for the man to finish that thing. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says no more delays. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. Mm. Listen, don't take thank this for you, Jesus. The Lord says no oh, more thank delays. You. Amen. Somewhere, this is your word. No more delays. Amen. Amen. Thank I got this word. No more delays. No more delays no more in delays. Jesus' name. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Thank you, my God. Mamlaka Ma Evelyn. Yes, doctor. The Lord just told me, he says that he is going to arrest a demonic bed that flies around your home, your compound. Hmm. Literally, that bed will collide with the strange fire of God. That bed will, will, I'm not talking about the vision. I'm not talking about the dream. I'm talking about something physical. That, that bed will drop dead. Amen. When that happens, your destiny is open up for exploits. Leave it in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, John, my son, John Ngugi. The Lord just told me, mm. and I'm, I'm the Lord. I'm seeing, I'm seeing document, and this yes. is a contract that God is. Yes. I'm seeing a contract that God is going to give you. I'm mm. seeing a contract that God, God is going to give you between this month and next month. Get ready. Get ready. One contract mm. and it will end will end a season of drought in your life. Amen. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Amen. my Amen. father. Thank you, my Amen. father. Stella Mugo. Stella Mugo. Can I talk to Stella Mugo? Oh, thank you, Jesus. 
Stella, I see a Stella on the call. Stella, how are you? Stella, how are you? I can't hear Stella. Okay, let me pray. Stella, the Lord spoke to me about you. Go and look for Apple, three of them. From yes. tomorrow, from tomorrow midnight, you, you take one apple yeah. every night, every midnight for the next three days. The Lord says, I should announce yes. season of sweetness. Your season mm. of sweetness and your season of settlement. Receive it mm. in the name of Jesus. And whoever would tap into this, receive Amen. your season of sweetness. In Jesus name. Thank mm. you, my Father. Amen. Maggie Muron, Murondo. Maggie Murondo. Is your mom alive? Maggie Murondo. Hello, Prophet. Where is your mom? My mom passed on. How? Oh. Some years back. Some years back, eh? Uh -uh. Yes. No. Hello. Okay. Do you see her in your dream? Maggie? Mm. No, sometimes, okay. but rarely. Okay, okay. Father, I declare, let the dead remain dead. Mm. Any satanic connection and any satanic tie that connects Maggie. Do you know anybody in your mom's family who answers to a name like Mary? Yes. Who is that? Uh, she's my auntie. Is auntie? Married to my, yeah, to my okay. uh, mom's brother, yeah. Okay, okay. Father, I declare, anyone that is busy connecting mm. the living and the dead, I command that person in their wickedness to be exposed. Mm. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The realm of the spirit, Maggie, the Lord says, I should pray and take away every demonic veil covering your face. Mm. I pray and I take it away from you. In the name of Jesus. That which is yours, no mm. devil can take from you. Amen. I call it done. Amen. Amen. All right, let's give God praise. My time is up. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you for such an awesome time in your presence. Thank you for miracle. Thank you for the word. Thank you for grace. Thank you for power. Thank you for manifestations. And thank you for testimonies. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Five of you shout a believing amen. 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 Guys, we are back full gear. I want you to 